Good day everyone and welcome back. Today, a custom tale written by me and Dr. Sumerian relating to SCP-1983 about the D-Class that killed an SCP. A massive thanks to all the patrons and members who keep this channel going, a quick word from today's sponsor and we'll get started. Escape from Site-19 is back with the all-new additional Security Protocols pack to really turn up the pressure on your game. The Security Protocol cards will add a whole new difficulty level. Pick just one of 12 Protocol cards and once you and your team hit a determined number of lockdowns, the Protocol activates and the new tougher rules come into play. The more players you have, the tougher it gets. The pack comes with 12 Security Protocol cards, 3 Security Protocol board markers, a new 001 card, 2 new character cards, and a new Administrator, Safe, Euclid, Keta, and Thaumiel card as well. If you think you and your friends have got the skill it takes to escape Site-19 again but on extreme difficulty, follow my link below and get the Security Protocol pack now. I can't go any further. I've got a few shots left in my gun but I can't pray anymore. Not in mean it. Not after I saw the nest. But you, if you found this, you've got to be an agent too. Maybe you're stronger than I was. If you can, go in and destroy the nest. Destroy every last heart. If you do, maybe it'll kill them. It's the only thing I can think of. You'll probably die doing it, but... <laughs> you're dead anyway. So what's it matter to you how it happens? Shane Taylor, otherwise known as D-14134, looked away from the note and over his shoulder. The open doorway was pitch black except for the glossy ground. No way back. He crouched down, replacing the dead man's note and taking their pistol. He wiped his hands on his orange jumpsuit and kept to the shadows. He muttered a prayer under his breath. Another day, another experiment for the Foundation. At least he was selected specifically for this mission above his fellow inmates. He entered a room filled with the same black material the note had spoken of. He backed out. A dark, blurred shape filled his peripheral vision, followed by the sound of heavy boots. Shane just ducked back into the room as a burst of gunfire ripped through the wall beside him. The shooters began to pray aloud. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Wait! I'm one of you guys! The gunfire slowly died off, and he could still hear bootfalls getting gradually closer. Does the Black Moon howl? Called a voice Shane didn't recognise. The fuck does that mean? My name is Shane Taylor. I was sent by one of your commanders. Oh, five something. Come out. Slowly. Shane peered out to see two armed men, rifles trained on him. A D-class. He's armed. Want me to put him down? Negative. Hold your fire. You, D-class, approach. Let me see your receipt. Try anything and you're dead. Don't test me. Bradley, watch our six. Yes, sir. Shane pulled the note from his pocket he was handed prior to coming into this place. The commander read it and gave him a nod. What makes you so special? Apparently my unwavering belief can be of some help. <laughs> Don't see how. We're all on borrowed time in here, mate. Contact rear! The two men whipped around and fired at a black humanoid making its way towards them, claws dragging on the walls beside it. Shane's senses were overloaded by a combination of gunfire and religious rhetoric. The humanoid dropped, dissolving into a fine powder, but another quickly formed behind it. The commander shouted at the other soldier before turning on Shane. Move your ass now! Shane began running through the rooms, quickly followed by the soldiers. More black humanoids began appearing. Go left, go left! Shane skidded around the next corner and found himself sprinting down a pitch black corridor. The commander called out once more and the group came to a stop. They all turned to see the dark humanoid standing at the edge of the darkness. <laughs> they don't do so well in the dark, you see. Fucks them up a bit. Five minutes of awkward navigation in the dark and the group were standing in a mall. They circled around the open food court before settling down in a dark bookshop. They passed around some water and an energy bar before Shane found his voice. I read a note on my way in here. It spoke of a nest. The soldiers exchanged a look. It said destroying this nest might also kill this... this thing. Aye, we've seen the nest. Why hasn't it been destroyed yet? It's not as easy as just dropping a few rounds in it and calling it a day, D-Class. Dozens of those things in there. It's completely lit up and seeing that pile of hearts and seeing those things crawl out of them. 
It shakes your faith a bit when you see shit like that. Not for me. Oh, you think? He nodded. It's suicide. But look at where we are. If the O5 saw fit to send a D-class in here, then you must be something special. Shane stared back at him. Well, we're dead men anyway, so might as well do something useful. Right then, we'll need to find it first. The only time we were able to find it is when one of those fuckers took a heart back there. Shane felt the notion weigh on his mind. He had already accepted he was never leaving here, but now the end was imminent. I think it's gotta be me, the soldier said to his commander. I... I have my doubts. My faith will be first to waver. Good man, Bradley. Let's gear up. Bradley began handing over his weapons and kit to Shane. A cheerful grin appeared as he began stacking up magazines and putting grenades into pouches. All that time at the range was finally going to pay off. Also, he felt pretty cool. The commander reached up to the top shelf of another bookcase and pulled down an angry looking machine gun. Shane gave his own rifle a pitiful look. Back in the house now, the team stuck to the shadows, creeping quietly from room to room. They froze as a single opaque humanoid walked past the doorway. You're up, Bradley. Shane did not approve of the leader's callous attitude. Par for the course of being an MTF commander, he guessed. The young man gave them all a salute before entering the corridor and shouting at the humanoid. It quickly turned and sunk its hand into the young man's ribcage before pulling out his still beating heart. Bradley dropped to the floor. I'll take point. Watch our six. Stay glued to my ass and stay in the shadows. The two peered over a ledge and looked down at the room. A large pile of ripped hearts pulsated in the center of a ring of lights. Lamps, candles, torches, anything bright. Several dozen humanoids stood around the pile, some dragging more light sources, others just standing around swaying slightly. The note I read. It said that when a new heart is added, another one of those things comes out of it. Maybe if we destroy every single heart, then every single one of these things will die too. A good a guess as any D-class. Right, listen up. As soon as we're down there, throw every incendiary you got onto that pile. Once that's done, we stand our ground and pull down as many of these things as we can. We need to give the fire time to burn. The sulfur will probably catch at some point, so... Try and keep your mask on for as long as you can. Burn to death, choke to death, or have your heart ripped out. Fantastic choices. <sighs> Can't believe I'm about to fight side by side with a D-class. Alright, fuck it, let's do it. With that, Shane followed after the man down the stairs into the room. The creatures all turned in unison to see several flaming grenades flying above them. They landed on top of the pile and exploded in a tremendous fireball. Several of the humanoids instantly caught fire and disintegrated. The others began moving towards the two. The commander took the lead and unleashed a hailstorm of bullets on the humanoids while shouting Bible verses. Shane peeled right around the fireball and began cutting through the humanoids. He threw two more grenades into the fireball as he came around the other side, linking back up with the commander. Ammo depleted. The commander dropped his machine gun and slung around his rifle before setting off on another rotation. A yell from behind Shane yielded the sight of one of the flaming humanoids grabbing hold of the commander. He watched in horror as he saw the man burst into flames. Shane raised his rifle, said a few choice words, and dropped the creature. The commander lumbered his way towards Shane, screaming in agony. God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. Sensing the danger. Shane delivered a hard kick to the commander, sending him falling into the flaming pile of flesh. But of power, and love, and self-discipline. Several smaller explosions rocked the area as the munitions in the commander's kit began to overheat. Shane ducked to his right and continued firing. More and more creatures came spilling into the room from all directions, most ablaze. To strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. His eyes now stinging from sweat, Shane pulled off his mask. He went for his sidearm, dropping his empty rifle and screamed as he felt the searing metal scald his skin. He felt pain radiating from all over him as blisters and burns began to appear. His vision was reduced to a sliver as his tears began to evaporate in the extreme heat. Be strong and courageous. Unshaken, he clung to his faith and continued the onslaught as the room quickly filled with fire. Shane let his pistol fall from his charred hand as the last of the creatures were swallowed up by the flames. 
He fell backwards onto the floor, spluttering up a frothy white fluid as he took in gulfs of burning sulphur. A cracked smile spread across Shane's face as he watched the pile of hearts crumble into ash. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created. And that concludes this tale. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Massive thanks to Sumerian for writing this with me. Head to his channel to show him some love. Big thanks to all the patrons and members who keep this channel going. Please consider joining them. And thank you to Rick Trexon, Wings of a Meme, Number of the Yeast, Splendid the Tear God, Razman, Guardian of Energy, Luna Wilson, Deathly Foreal, and Toadie. Big thanks to the council members, Arctoast Kibara, Captain Court, Hunter Killer, Tree, Cat Clone, Monarch, Bane, Kickerin, your local agent, Dr. Knight Rafe, Detex, and Tyson. And huge thanks to the administrators, Andre Bashert, Viger, Kamana, Infinite Tune, Pro Voice Actor 1, Techno Ninja, GFHD, Man Mana, Deep Dark Pain, Ryan Brenner, Afre Studios, and Keon Walker. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all soon. And take care. <laughs>